As part of our ongoing interview series with candidates for the U.S. Senate race this year, today we're meeting with Craig James, candidate for the U.S. Senate. Welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to be with you. Yeah. I'd like to talk to you about several different issues. And the, the first is, uh, recently on the BELO interview that you were on, the debate series, um, you, you came across with some very interesting perspectives on business. As a former football player and Super Bowl quarterback, and many people don't know that you've been, had a very successful business career after that, tell us a little bit about your business background and why that's important as a candidate for the Senate. Well, I think it's a very important piece of it, and, and, and first I'd highly recommend that everyone go and watch. Uh, that Senate debate, it's online, because that, that, that's the only time really you're going to see the four of us together. And you'll get a chance to see what each one of us stands for and how we present it. Uh, my business life is what I'm most proud of, and people don't know that of me. They know me as the football and broadcaster. Uh, but for 30 years I've started businesses. Uh, I started a broadcasting school training many of the men and women who are on the air today. I had a production company, probably the original content provider of video for the internet, partnership with Yahoo and Sporting News. Uh, then, I, then I've always had my ranching and real estate, real estate development business. So that's important in this particular race because when we talk about uncertainty, hurting businesses, I get that. I, I don't need somebody to come explain to me what it's done to my business the last three years. It's been horrific, a challenge. So that's why I'm so passionate about pushing back the government and federal regulations and allowing free markets to take place. As a partial owner of a, a company myself, Blue Wonder Gun Care Products, uh, I understand completely about what you mean about the uncertainty. And that's one thing that I haven't heard from other Senate candidates is what is really keeping business from investing and creating more jobs. As a senator, what would you do to help secure that uh, feeling that business people need for the being able to predict the future? And um, grow more jobs. Well, certainty is, is an absolute necessary part of the model when I go in and determine whether or not to do something. So when I'm looking at an asset, it's hard enough to make money with that asset knowing the rules going in and expecting them to stay the same. So when we have uncertainty, tax code might change, uh, things that might happen with regulations and costs because of those regulations as we get into the business, that kills me because we can't make an adjustment. If, if as an owner of a product or a company, we go in expecting something and the rules change as we've gotten into that, we can't make an adjustment. The government's forced it on us. That's why a lot of the money is staying on the sidelines today. We've talked a lot with uh, Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson about energy independence and the role that Texas can play in, in that. Tell us about your background with energy and, and how you would work on energy independence for Texas and the United States. Well, I'm not sure we can get to energy independence, but we can get between security and independence, somewhere in between there, and that's where we need to work towards. And, and when I think about energy, uh, I grew up in Houston, so I grew up around what I thought everyone had a Cadillac and had boots and an oil pump. I didn't have one, but I thought everyone else did. <laughs> um, you know, we have in Texas been blessed with oil and natural gas, and we need to be able to drill and explore that and take advantage of it. I'm a mineral rights owner as a rancher, and, and I want to have the ability for people to come in and to produce those so that I win and they win and the economy wins. We need a national energy policy that, that works towards giving us the ability in this country to tap into those resources. We don't have one right now. The political games being played with the Keystone Pipeline, uh, the EPA coming in trying to stranglehold Texas. I really believe the Barack Obama administration has Texas in its sights and trying to squeeze us out. The EPA is just one example, voters ID. You know, everything that they're doing is trying to suppress Texas, harass Texas. So I would get the EPA out of the way. I would abolish it. If we're going to take care of our environment here in Texas. We're not going to do anything to harm our lizards. We're not going to do anything to harm our, our state. I'm an outdoorsman, and, and I know that we're going to protect those. But we've got to drill and take advantage of our natural resources. And I think the businesses and industry have proven that they can work responsibly with the environment and still produce the types of energy resources that we need. Yesterday, the U.S. Senate tried to um, bring forward a budget. The, the Senate hasn't offered a budget, one of its main constitutional duties, in three years now since the Democrats and Harry Reid took over the Senate. That died. Mm -hmm. And they basically dropped their primary responsibility as a member of the Congress in putting forth a budget. As a junior senator from Texas, 
what would you do to try to make sure that the budget moves forward each year? I think conceptually in this country we have to have a conversation about what do you believe in? Do you believe in free markets, which was the fundamental core of what made this country great? All right? Or do you believe in socialism, redistribution of wealth, bottom line? And so, therefore, Harry Reid and the Democrats in the Senate are not bringing this thing forward because they don't want to have to make some tough decisions before the elections come up, bottom line. And they're going to have to be some drastic eliminations of programs, not just reform, but eliminations, so that we can get a budget in line and a balanced budget. We should have a balanced budget amendment. They've proven in Congress that they can't get it done. So for three years, nothing has taken place. I'm not surprised. Uh, it's a political game. Uh, I, would, I would offer this thought up. Why are members in the Senate being paid? They're not doing their job. Right. You know, if, if you and I in business out here on Real Street didn't do our task and did as poorly our jobs on Real Street as they're doing in the Senate chambers, I'd be busted and on the street. So would you. They're not doing their job. Shouldn't be paid for it. It's really amazing that, that under the Democratic leadership, I, I really think it's more that they don't want the American public during an election year to see who they really are and what they really want to support and they don't want to be held accountable for that. So, um, on the BELO debate the other night, you talked about defense spending and and how you would make adjustments and cuts in, in the defense budget if necessary. Explain that process to our readers and, and what you would support in terms of our defense spending. I think the most important thing for people to understand coming from me is uh, I'm not a military leader. I've not been in the military, so I'm not going to try to play military. Let's get politicians out of the military business and, and trust that they're going to tell us what they need. And if the military leaders say that they don't need as much money in their budget, then so be it, we can back off of that. But if they say that they need X, Y, and Z, we need to provide that for them to protect themselves who are out protecting us in our country. That's what I mean, fundamentally. Now, do we want to have wasteful spending? Absolutely not. Uh, do we want to have redundancy of spending? Absolutely not. We want to be mindful of what we're spending, but we have to protect our men and women. And we have to understand, I really believe this, we don't have secure borders right now. And there are men and women coming across, people, radical extremists, who want to harm us. And if we don't believe that in America, then we're fools. And, and so we got to defend our borders, we got to defend the men and women, get politicians out of the business of playing military leaders. Well, thank you for coming in and talking to us today. And we'd like to talk to you a little bit further on this on a, on a second interview, if, you, if that's all right with you. Yeah, you bet. And uh, we'll take a look some, at some other issues that are important to the voters and readers of Texas GOP Vote. Thank you very much. You got it. Thank you.